James Daunt, uh, Managing Director of Watersons. My first experience of, of reading were almost certainly being read to, um, though I grew up in a classically middle-class family in, in the 60s, uh, essentially, with not very many books in the house. Um, uh, and our interaction with books, certainly when, once I was reading on my own, was a daily visit um, a, a, and, and a weekly ritual to the local library. We were lucky enough to have one probably no more than 10 minute walk away. And, and I certainly remember that as a, as a continuous voyage. Um, and that also actually the relationship that one had with the librarians. Um, and in, in my case, there were two ladies in there and in we went, my mother in the background and, and we ran in and I've read this and I've read that and what should I read next? And that was um, hugely influential probably up until my, until almost my teens. I mean, I think I was still doing that when I was 10, 11, 12. And as, as a child growing up, there weren't very many bookshops in London, even. Um, I'm, I'm in North London, my local bookshop was the Dillons uh, in Gower Street. And, and that was a, an hour to get to and back again, but that was the local bookshop. And then obviously, once Tim Wollstone started opening these extraordinary sort of emporias, um, and books, etc., came in, uh, Dillons, obviously, Uttakas, we went from a landscape of, of a very small number of really frankly, very small little independents, and not even that many of them, to suddenly masses of shops everywhere. And of course, I was part of that, um, opening up my own shops in, in London. And my own journey into bookselling was, um, like most people, it was because I needed a job. In my case, I had left university and started working for a bank, enjoyable, but not one that fitted with, particularly with, with the ideas that my girlfriend had as to how we should be leaving our lives. I am now married to her, so I can say that. Um, uh, and I thought I had to do something that, that w resolved around my interests, which in my, in my case was reading and traveling. Um, set about trying to um, think about where I would do a bookshop, raise some money in order to do so, um, and then headed off looking for a bookshop um, and had a, uh, an agent doing so. Um, lots and lots of properties came and we looked at, and we in fact tried to get some and were outbid. Um, it was at the sort of late 80s, sort of great retail boom before the bust. Um, and then she sent me a list also always of the ones she'd rejected and one of them as I peered through I could just see endless bookshelves sort of receding into the distance and a great pool of light at the back and that was an old and very famous antiquarian bookshop on Maribyrn High Street um, and I rang her and said um, why did you reject this and she said oh it's too long it's too narrow it's in the wrong place and I said but did you notice anything about it and she said well it's full of shelves and I said you do realize what I'm trying to open up she said yes a bookshop I said, well, that's why I'm interested in thin, long, beautiful, beautiful shops full of shelves. Anyway, um, that was the first shop. We, we're obviously sitting here today in, in Cheltenham um, at the tail end of another fantastic festival. Um, the, the literary festivals, I think, do encapsulate a, a really central part of what we as bookshops um, do, really, as a purpose. We obviously allow people to select books and choose books and bring them closer to books. But there is also that element of which the festival is the pinnacle, which is connecting authors with readers. Um, and I think the, the, the proliferation of these festivals, um, uh, there's obviously always been the Cheltenhams of this world and the Hayes of this world at the forefront of it, but now many, many more. Um, and also within our own shops, also uh, an evolving and, and growing events program, which uh, does that essential thing, brings readers and authors together. And you've only got to spend a week here going to um, events to realize just how stimulating and exciting um, that whole process is. Um, and I, I think we uh, at Waterstones can do an e enormously more uh, to, to further that and bring it into the local sh um, bookshop environment. I think, if anything, um, what the, the, the spirit that's within the company at the moment is all about really being passionate about reading, passionate about what we as a bookshop can bring to, um, to, to book lovers um, and make our bookshops truly stimulating and, um, and, and fascinating environments. And part of that is the physical environment, but an awful lot of it is simply about the um, passion and commitment and enthusiasm of the booksellers who work within it. Um, and I think you can see that in the advertising that we're running at the moment, which is far, far from the conventional advertising that we would have done. Normally we'd have said, you know, Jamie's got a new book out and Nigella's got another cookery book and you know, there's an Ian McEwan and it's half price and, and all of those kind of messages. And what we're saying now is 
we've got wonderful bookshops. Come in and enjoy them. Um, the power of a bookshop, the stimulation of a bookshop, and doing it, I think, in obviously in in a short form, but really, um, really hoping to um, remind readers and, and and book lovers that a bookshop is a place to come into. N not actually just Waterstones bookshops as a whole. It is a our responsibility to make our bookshops uh, justify um, that that um, that encouragement.